Yeah, because I think I think you know from a parent standpoint, you, you want to make sure, and from a board of education standpoint too, we want to make sure we're here to put policies in place that protect the students, all students. And you hear too many times in these tragic, tragic situations, it was a former student got into a fight or was bullied, but it wasn't bullying because it wasn't a, a, a characteristic. No, it's still bullying though. You, a bully is a bully. If you're a bully under code of conduct, that doesn't need to be HIV. They, you could still be bullied and have nothing to do with HIV. If somebody's mistreating you every single day or even once, and you're being mistreated under code of conduct, how are we, think how are we handling that in code of conduct? Because I, I feel like we go through this, you know, we go through, we hear all these bullying cases, you know, all these HIVs, and when they get unfounded, oh, no, they handle unfounded. But they handle code of conduct. It doesn't come. But how? But how are we, we, we don't hear that. But you won't hear it. You're not going to hear it because it's not brought to the board level. So code of conduct, the reason why you have code of conduct in school, and this is across the state of New Jersey, the code of conduct sets the priority. So a, to a, a kid walks by another kid every day and just, I don't know, uh, pushes in the back of the neck. I don't know, just taps them, taps them every day, taps them every day. There's no distinguishing characteristic. I, they, they just find out for whatever reason this kid is tapping this other kid, but it's disrupting this child. He can't concentrate. He's always afraid the kids can come up behind him. That other child from touching him can still be suspended in school or out of school without the board being notified and without it being harassment, intimidation, bullying under the New Jersey State 11 year ago, 